Matt, with the final preps being run, we now know the 20 horse field for the Kentucky Derby, barring any uh, unforeseen circumstances where some of them can't run. I already mentioned combatant is the first horse that wants to move up. I'm going to go down, Matt, let's do it this way. I'm going to go down the entire 20 horse field and I'm going to do it in points order. And I'd like you to make a real quick comment of every horse in the field. And then uh, we'll just move on down the list all the way down to number 20, who I think is named for a famous football player. You ready, sir? I am ready. All right. Let's start with Magnum Moon. Magnum Moon, winner of the Arkansas Derby. The last five years, the winner has been one of the horses that has won a hundred point qualifying race. Magnum Moon is one of those horses. Unbeaten, but he will be tested severely in this Kentucky Derby. I don't necessarily like him if he's too close to the pace, but I think he is tractable enough to do something different in the Derby, so he's a danger. Number two, Good Magic. Good Magic is getting better. Last year, he won the BC Juvenile on the third start of his training cycle. The Kentucky Derby will be the third start in his training cycle this year. Absolutely. And that third start last year, the BC Juvenile was really a huge performance, especially considering he shipped out to, to Del Mar. Chad Brown, you got to respect his trainer. Bluegrass performance is not good enough to win this Kentucky Derby, Matt. I'm convinced of that. But I think this, the trip, the fact that he can rally and the fact that he should improve again makes him dangerous. Number three is audible. The winner of the Florida Derby and the Holy Bull. Let's not forget that he has had a pretty good darn year. Um, maybe we're forgetting a little bit because he isn't the latest big winner. I like Audible. You like Audible more than I do. I do respect that he has a real pretty explosive move, and it seems like he can be in different positions early in the race. I do really question the fields that he's beaten in Florida. I think it, this, this could be a rude awakening for him. But certainly he's one of my big seven and uh, another horse to fear a little bit. The New York bred one of the, uh, the second already from Todd Pletcher. Another from Todd Pletcher, Matt Noble Indy. Yeah, I was just going to say this is another Todd, one of the four from the, the Todd Pletcher barn. Won the Louisiana Derby. It was just by a neck uh, from the late charging my boy Jack. Maybe the number four of the four Todd Pletchers. He's my number four for sure, Matt. I'm not as high as him as many or I, I know as you are. Uh, I think he beat a weak field in the uh, Louisiana Derby or relatively weak compared to the rest of the horses in here. I didn't think he was best that day. I thought my boy Jack was best. He struggled with Mississippi a little bit in an allowance race, and he was beaten by less than great horses in the Risen Star. I just don't see him running a huge derby. I could be wrong. Number five is Vino Rosso. Vino Rosso from the Wood Memorial, another fourth Todd Pletcher. Loved what I saw from him. I loved how he was willing to fight it out and bump and grind going down the stretch. He looks like a horse that can handle traffic and trouble in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, that's that's one of the many things I like about this one. I think he's bred for a distance, heard nothing but good things about how he trains or even when he was growing up on the farm. Vino Rosso, like you said, he uh, he was part of the bumping. He caused the bumping, maybe, but he he seems like a tough horse who's only going to get better, and he's only going to get better at a distance. He can rally. I like Vino Rosso quite a bit. Number seven is Bolt Doro. Bolt Doro most recently ran second to the fen the Phenom Justify. What does that mean? It's hard to know. But I know that this horse has never raced outside of Southern California, and I'm very concerned about that. To me, he's the most battle-tested horse on the list because he's run against nothing but good horses for the last six races or so, five, six races now. He didn't win the Santa Anita Derby, but uh, I don't think Justify is going to be alone on a 112 uh, easy lead again. I think Boltoro moves forward in his third race. I think he's got a good running style. Another big threat for me. Number eight on our list, Matt, or is, is I guess that would be number seven, is Enticed. Enticed has got a lot of points, but I didn't like what I saw from Enticed in the Wood Memorial when the battle started up with and the bumping started up with uh, Vino Rosso. To me, Enticed seemed to back away from that. I don't like him a lot in the Derby, Brian. 
Yeah, he's a nice horse who should win uh, more stakes races. Matt, he's already won a couple graded stakes. But I think the final 16th of the mile in the wood tells the story for me. Vino Rosso taking off and enticed tiring. I think the same thing's going to happen in the Kentucky Derby. Now we get to number eight on the list, Matt, and he might be the most scary horse on the list to me, and that's Mendelssohn. Yes, we got question marks just because he's uh, got limited dirt experience, but boy, did he look good in the UAE Derby. We know he knows how to travel across the pond, winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year for Aiden O'Brien. He's going to come in at the last minute for the Kentucky Derby, so we're not going to get a lot of uh, hubbub about him before. So I think he's got a good chance, though. Yeah, he scares me, Matt, because I think on his best, he could be the best horse in this crop. There's no doubt about that. The UAE Derby is proof of that. Breeders' Cup Juvenile was wonderful. I do worry about his dirt experience. I also worry a little bit about probably three favorites or maybe three of the top four favorites are all speedy types. Mendelssohn, Justify, Magnum Moon. If they worry about each other too much early, that could make it tougher on all of them. But like I said, he is a danger coming from Europe by way of Dubai. Next on the list, Matt, is the likely favorite. Number nine on the points list is Justify. Yeah, Brian, and we may not agree on everything on the list, but I think we agree on a lot of things about Justify, and and that is that this is a tremendously talented horse, but we got a lot of question marks. Um, again, another horse who has never left Southern California. He's only got three starts. He likes to be out front. He's only run, he's only beaten 14 horses total in his career. He's going to face more than that in one race in the Derby. Yeah, another who could be the most talented three-year-old in this crop. There's no doubt about that. But I think the obstacles are huge. Never raced away from Santa Anita. Only faced one good horse, and that was with the easy lead in the Santa Anita Derby. Um, I, I'm just not sure that he can overcome everything. If he wins this race against this kind of derby field, I'm ready to call him something truly special. Number 10 on the list, Matt Quip. Yeah, Brian, you know, and I feel I feel pretty certain I'm not sticking my neck out. I think in the horses that we just went over, we uh, we named the Kentucky Derby. So now when we move down the list, I got so much respect for a horse like Quip. Boy, five starts. He's run well in every one of them, except in that uh, Kentucky Jockey Club as a two year old. He's a fighter. He runs well. He's just running into one of the best Kentucky Derby fields in so long. Right, Matt, I agree. I think we could say that about a lot of these horses. Quip is a nice horse. The Tampa Bay Derby was an awesome performance. And the Arkansas Derby, I mean, he hung around. I, I, I didn't think he was going to finish second when Magnum Moon accelerated away from him. But uh, another strong performance from Quip. Tough spot here. I might say the same about the next horse, Flame Away. Yeah, same thing, Brian. I, I I call Flame Away the blue collar horse in here because he comes to work and gives a hundred percent every single time. He runs well and he's tough and he competes. I'd love to own him. He's going to win races during the summer, but not in this Kentucky Derby field, Brian. On any surface, at any distance, gotta love Flame Away. I'm with you, Matt, not in this Kentucky Derby field. Next on the list, an interesting horse from American Pharaoh's Connection, Solomini. Yeah, interesting is a good word to use, Brian. Um, I expected better from him in the Arkansas Derby. There always seems to be an excuse. He's a bit of a quirky horse, and all of that does not bode well in the 20-horse field of the Kentucky Derby. What if he changes leads in the Kentucky Derby? Probably still not enough, but Solomini is an interesting horse, and if somebody wants to use him in their exotics, I wouldn't talk you off. I can't, but he's a nice horse. Next on the list, Bravazo. Bravazo coming off the eighth place performance in the Louisiana Derby after a big win in the Risen Star. I don't know if I could just draw a line through that race, especially this year with the Derby field. Um, good horse, but I'm not going to use him. I'll draw a line through his last race, Matt, and go back to his previous race, which was his big race, the Risen Star. That's not nearly good enough to make a strong dent against this year's Kentucky Derby field. Next on the list, we've already talked about a little bit, my boy Jack. My boy Jack, uh, a 
great effort. I love that his connections uh, went after it and got the points they needed in the Lexington. I like this horse. I like his determinations. I like his closing move. And in any other derby year, I would be very excited about him. But I still think I might use him in my trifectas. Yeah, I, I, I think my, my boy Jack will be passing horses, and I would be surprised if he didn't rally for at least sixth or seventh. I'm not sure if he's going to rally too much better than that. Nice horse, tough spot in this year's Derby. Uh, the next horse is a completely different kind of horse. Matt, promises fulfilled. Yeah, promises fulfilled again. Uh, um, ran a huge uh, fountain of youth and then came back and, and ran ninth in the Florida Derby. Um, even like similarly, like we said with Bravazo, even if we draw a line through that Florida Derby, um, I think this uh, Kentucky Derby field is too much for him. Promises fulfilled interests me for one reason, Matt. I think he is going to add speed. I don't see him doing anything but going to the lead or being part of the lead early. Uh, first in the Fountain Youth, last in the Florida Derby doesn't matter to me. I'd like to see him run a strong early pace to make this an honest derby. But that's all he'll do. Uh, next is Free Drop Billy. Matt, once upon a time, he was my yearling selection out of the Keeneland sale a few years ago. I'm not as high on him as I once was, though. Yeah, but that was a pretty good pick back then, Brian. I give you, uh, I give you credit for that. Free Drop Billy, I thought in the bluegrass that he might put it all together, but... Trouble seems to find free drop Billy. No, no matter what happens, something always happens. And I don't like that kind of uh, past performance when you're in the Kentucky Derby. Well, you know, Sporting Chance bothered him late. But, you know, I, I think he was going to finish fourth and he got put up to third. I just don't see a, a good enough form for free drop Billy to expect a big performance in the Derby. Lone Sailor was uh, a bit of a long shot when he was second to Noble Indy in the Louisiana Derby. Yep. Uh, Tom Amos had that horse ready, and, and Tom Amos can can come up with a surprise now and then. But uh, once again, um, if we're not highly rating the Louisiana Derby compared to other preps, this is going to be a tough spot. Yeah, he's he's a he's a good enough rallier. He's he's shown some uh, ability to come from behind and run some good races. He's a horse in other years where I would have thought, oh, he could do something in the Derby this year. I like close other closers quite a bit better, and it's such a deep field. He strikes me as a horse who's going to rally for ninth or tenth. Uh, the the horse below him, though, I'm a little bit more interested. 18th on the list, Matt is Hofberg. Hofberg, only three starts in his career. And heading into the Derby, we've mentioned that with other horses. That has to be a concern. Bill Mott, this is a tap it. Nice, nice rally to get second in the Florida Derby. Um, Going to be rallying here, but I'm afraid he might get too far behind. I like the talent. I, I, I like the looks of the horse. I like the breeding. I like the connections. Awfully tough, though, with only two races, three, li three lifetime races, and one uh, stakes experience where probably Audible was the only horse that ran. Uh, I, I could see him running a good race, but he's up against it a little bit. Number 19 is Friesian Fire. Yep. Uh, uh, the owners of this uh, horse have wanted to get to the Kentucky Derby. It looks like they have made it, but he just doesn't, he, he can't get the distance in here. Uh, um, Friesian Fire had, had a, you know, some nice wins. Kind of a one-turn horse, in my opinion. Um, legitimate long shot in the Derby. Yeah, and I'm, call, I'm mixing up him and his sire in the names. Of course, it's Forenzi Fire, but I don't, I'm like Matt. I don't give him any shot in here. And last but not least is Gronk Gronkowski coming from Europe. Talk about no shot in the race, Brian. Uh, I think Gronkowski would have trouble winning an allowance race on the undercard uh, on Derby Day. Um getting in on the Europe Euro trail to the Derby. I don't get it. I don't understand why a horse like this gets an invitation. It isn't going to increase the handle in the Derby because they bet in the Derby in the betting parlors over there. No Gronkowski for me. Gronkowski. I actually like him a, a, quite a bit more than several Americans here, but yeah, too much to ask. Uh, I, I think he's a nice horse and Jeremy, Jeremy Nosita knows he's a nice horse. 
Uh, I think he's got some talent, but this is too much. He probably picked the wrong year uh, to bring uh, a horse like this over to the Derby. That's 20, Matt. 